or hesitation, come with joy or yearning, all who hunger, all who thirst for life in all its fullness. Generous God, generous Saviour, touch us through your spirit. Our theme this morning for our harvest service is bread, or at least it's harvest with bread as a symbol of bread. The reason I chose that symbol is because I was thinking back to harvest festivals in my childhood. I grew up in an incredibly rural area, um, a tiny hamlet of eight houses, and the crops around us were apples and wheat mostly so harvest festivals always smelt of apples and wheat and of course there was always fresh bread as we think of harvest as we think of food i thought we'd choose a loaf which i'm afraid was bought on saturday and has been out in the rain since then so it isn't quite as crusty as it was but i thought we'd choose i'd use a loaf this loaf to represent for us harvest the harvest resources around the world and before we look at anything else we're going to think about how those harvest resources are shared i know some of you will have seen this already can i have some volunteers please i'd like three volunteers i'm not going to ask you to do anything difficult sit up will you volunteer for us please anyone else willing to volunteer if you'd like to just come and stand here right this Yes, please, I want three. Right, this, we're going to use this to represent harvest resources around the world. Do you like French bread? Would you like a piece? <laughs> Would you like some? Would you like some? Right, so we've shared those out nice and fairly, haven't we? You did all right there. We all laugh. But what we've just done is we've looked at how the harvest resources are shared around the world. The difficult question. Which group are we? Yeah. We are this group. We are the group that have virtually all of it. So those of you who know me well will know that I cannot do a harvest service where we simply say, thank you for all the good stuff we have. Because I think to say, thank you for all the good stuff we have without remembering these two groups, if I may be very blunt, I think that would be unchristian. So in our harvest, our focus, we look, yes, at Thanksgiving, but also at what's going on around the world. So thank you very, very much. Would you like to put your rather damp piece of French bread down on the table and we'll worry about what to do with it later. And so in our order of service, we come to section two, saying sorry. Lord, as we remember the harvest of your love, the rich diversity of plant and animal life, we are sorry for the times when we have used your gifts carelessly and acted ungratefully. We enjoy the fruits of the harvest, but sometimes forget that you have given them to us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We are thoughtless and do not care enough for the world you have made. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We store up goods for ourselves alone, as if there were no God and no heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his son to be our saviour, forgive us and make us holy to serve him in his world. Amen. And so we affirm our faith in the loving God in whom we believe. 
with the whole church, we affirm that we are made in God's image, befriended by Christ, empowered by the Spirit, with people everywhere. We affirm God's goodness at the heart of humanity, planted more deeply than all that is wrong. With all creation, we celebrate the miracle and wonder of all life, the unfolding purposes of God, forever at work in ourselves and the world. Amen. We're going to hear a harvest reading, which is not one on a reading from the weekly reading sheet. I should have asked this earlier. May I have a volunteer who's willing to read our reading this morning? Thank you very much indeed. I don't think there are any complicated names. found Jesus on the other side of the lake and asked, Teacher, where did you get here? When did you get here? He answered, I tell you, you are not looking for me because you saw miracles, but because you ate all the food you wanted. Don't work for food that spoils. Work for food that gives eternal life. The Son of Man will give you his food, because God the Father has given him the right to do so. What exactly does God want us to do? The people asked. Jesus answered, God wants you to have faith in the one he sent. They replied, What miracle will you work so that we can have faith in you? What will you do? For example, when our ancestors were in the desert, they were given manna to eat. Jesus then told them, I tell you for certain that Moses wasn't the one who gave you the bread from heaven. My father is the one who gives you the true bread from heaven. And the bread that God gives is the one who came down from heaven give life to the world. The people said, Sir, give us this bread and don't ever stop. Jesus replied, I am the bread that gives life. No one who comes to me will ever be hungry. No one who has faith in me will ever be thirsty. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Today, as I said, we are celebrating harvest, joining with Castleton Church as they do that. We're taking time to give thanks for the food we eat, to remember that everything that meets our physical needs comes from God's goodness and God's generosity. And we're taking time to remember, too, that any genuine thanksgiving for what we have cannot be separated from remembering our calling to love and to care for those who have less. Food is important, especially, of course, to those who don't have enough. But Jesus reminds us in that reading that we've just heard, that the food that gives eternal life is spiritual food, not physical food. Jesus is the bread of heaven, he tells us, giving life to the world. As Christ's body here on earth today, our spiritual calling is to give life to the world, life in all its fullness, so that the whole creation may flourish. As I always do, even though we are indoors, as I always do with these outdoor services, I'm going to send you away for five to ten minutes to look and to reflect. You can go outside into the rain if you want to, 
if you prefer not to do that and you prefer to stay in church, then look and reflect while you remain in church. Today, I'm going to invite you, help yourself to a piece of bread from the selection that I've put here. That one's garlic, by the way. Help yourself to a piece of bread from the selection here. Find somewhere to sit or walk and enjoy eating that piece of bread. And as you do, use that bread, the enjoyment of eating it, the experience, use that and what you see around you to prompt your thoughts and your prayers about harvest, physical or spiritual. And then in five to 10 minutes time, we'll gather here again. We'll share how God has led us and we'll pray together. So do help yourself. As I say, that one there is garlic. So if you detest garlic, avoid that one and the ones next to it. <laughs> Over to you.
Thank you, Richard. I think it's wonderfully encouraging that even on a day like today, when I send you off outside, if you wish, probably about half of us, I think, went to wander around outside. So we are still very much an outdoor service, even though we're indoors. I sent you off with a piece of bread to reflect about harvest, physical or spiritual. Anyone got anything they would like to share with us from their reflection outside or inside? I'll pass you the microphone. We're lucky to have the rain. Thank you. The colours of the trees looking at the photographs down there, amazing, wonderful colours at the moment. We can see that as well. You can. Thank you. Yeah, I just had fun. I took my bread and I made breadcrumbs <laughs> all the way down to the bottom of the churchyard and followed them back. <laughs> Probably a spiritual harvest, I think. Found my way home. <laughs> the birds get the bread. All the birds singing outside, the patter of the rain on the puddles and the, the image of the circles that the raindrops make, the, the beauty of it all. You know, just shades Thank you. of green out there. Thank you. I was Nesh. I stayed inside. But I look round and this church has been here since 12 something or other. And it's probably always been a harvest fest. The Lord says, not lost, but gone before. And that person that's probably had a harvest festival. And I found uh, now lost again. There was the prayer of St. Augustine of Hippo, who, apart from being the saint, the most hilarious name, probably had harvest and was celebrating that when he was around as well. So. And we think that some places aren't having harvest now, so what's going on? Yeah. At that point, it gets too hard. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I, I also opted to stay here, but went through this pile of books here. 
And uh, it's not only food we get from harvest, we get the cloth from our clothes and flax and cotton and wool. They're all harvested. They certainly are. Thank you. Harvest is God's gift to us. Uh, the rain, rather, being is God's gift to us. Yeah. Walking around the church, you're aware of what a nuisance the rain is to such an old building. The gutters and the drains are all completely clogged. And uh, we're trying to spend, but we're trying to find ways of getting that sorted out and spending lots of money having to do it. But there are parts of the world where they'd absolutely love to have a morning like this yeah. <laughs> and haven't had one for years in some cases, I believe. Spoken like a true church warden. Uh, yes. The blessing of harvest, it's so easy to forget. A blessing of rain, it's so easy to forget, isn't it? Anyone else got anything they would like to share? This isn't a downer, but I was thinking about how we waste a lot of food. And what you said earlier made me think, do we value the gift enough, really? Because when you see the piles and piles of that are just going into scripts or yeah, into landfill. It's not right. Thank you. Thank you for all the oh I'll read it again in a minute. Thank you for all that you've shared and for all those reflections, all those thoughts that maybe you haven't wanted to share this morning. We do so often need those opportunities to take the time, the space, to give thanks for the simple things like the rain. I, I like many of you, I heard the rain coming down and the, the noise of them coming down from the church. How grateful. Um, and also the leaves. I, I, admired the beauty but I also thought all those leaves going down into the soil rotting down producing the harvest for next year there's so much to be thankful for I'm going to pray a little for all of us and then we will pray together with the holding cross as we often do God our creator we give thanks for your goodness to us, especially today. We give thanks for harvest and for all the harvest donations that have been made across our communities to support our local food banks. And we pray for your blessing today on those who will receive our gifts, on those who do not have enough. God of all, we remember with sorrow and with shame those around the world suffering hunger and failed harvests because of the ways in which we have misused your planet. Give us strength and courage to strive for the flourishing of all. God, our sustainer, teach us to always turn to you, finding in you the spiritual bread from heaven and the living water that meets all our needs and stills our fears. God, our Redeemer, give us grace to live as those who bear your image. May our lives reflect your love and care for all and may our lives be a source of blessing for all finally when you leave from today's service i invite you to take away one of these harvest cards it's a very very simple card a photograph it says on it what is my harvest and i have very deliberately phrased that question what is my harvest in such a way that you might interpret it in many many different ways 
you might come up with many, many different answers. Answers to do with physical harvest, spiritual harvest, to do with you personally, to do with people across the world. It's a very, very wide question and deliberately so. My prayer is that you will take that card away and you will take time in the coming weeks to explore that question in your reflections and in your prayers. We're going to pray together now. For those of you who are not familiar with these services, we have a holding cross, a very, very simple holding cross. I will pass it round. So I'll give it to the first person, you give it to the next. While you're holding that holding cross, you are leading our prayers. And you can do that in any way you like. You can pray out loud. You can name something that you would like. All of us to hold in our prayers in silence. Or you can simply sit and hold that cross in silence. And when you are ready, pass it on to the next person. Sometimes there's a contrast between rain and the potential needed to stop the flow. And sometimes rain can take it away, clean it out of decency and stop the sun.
We thank you, loving Father, for placing all these prayers on our hearts. And we thank you for your promise through Jesus that you always hear our prayers. So let's sum up all of our prayers, those spoken and those set in the silence of our hearts by saying together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And so we come to our closing prayer on our order of service. Each thing we have received, from you it came, O God. Each thing for which we hope, from your love it will be given. Kindle in our hearts within a flame of love to our neighbours, from the lowliest thing that lives to the name that is highest of all. Amen. We're going to finish our time together here this morning by singing a traditional harvest hymn that I know that you will know well. I hope that John is going to lead us. What number is it? We plough the fields and scatter. What number? Tend the earth, care for God's good creation, and bring forth the fruits of righteousness. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, 
and Holy Spirit be with us and with all those we love and remain with us always. Amen. Together from our order of service, we go into the world to walk in God's love and to reflect God's glory. Amen. I believe we have coffee, is that right, Linda?